Hey everybody, it's Justin from Bittner Built, and today we're going to be building an enclosure, primarily for my AnchorMake M5C 3D printer. I just got this, I love it, uh, and when you get a tool that you love, it needs a home so you can protect it. So part of that is what this enclosure is for, but we're making a huge enclosure, one that could fit up to three machines, either multiple 3D printers, or I have a fiber laser coming in, all sorts of different stuff. One of the big focuses on this enclosure is going to be air extraction. And that's so if whatever I'm using in here is uh, creating a chemical that I don't want to be breathing in, it's going to be airtight and it's going to suck that chemical and spew it out the back of the house, but not before going through a charcoal filter too, because I don't want to just throw it out into the environment. I want to clean it before it gets out too. Uh, so stick with me. We're going to just max out this cabinet with all sorts of goodies today on Bittner Built. So you might have noticed that I already have two walls up in this build, and that's because I've been racking my brain over how to approach this all week. I really wanted to just build a cabinet carcass. That would be the appropriate way to do it. Um, but it, I have limitations with this space. Every job has their own, you know, scenarios and stuff. So I have to roll with this. So, uh, in your situation, probably a cabinet carcass is better just to place in the space. But unfortunately I couldn't do that with the restrictions that I have. After my enclosure was in place, the next thing I did was spray it down with a flame retardant. Uh, you can find these on Amazon. They're class A fire retardant sprays. And when you do this and spray it to a porous material like wood, it absorbs this fire retardant and makes it to where it really won't actively catch on fire except in very extreme conditions. If you watched my video where I set enclosures on fire, uh, the flame retardants worked really, really good. So being as I'm putting machines in here that cause heat, like 3D printers, um, those become fire hazards, especially in a wood box. So you need to take this step, coat it with a fire retardant inside because, you know, we don't want to fire. Next, I wanted to talk about lighting. Uh, you could put the LED strip lighting in your enclosure. I've used it in my CNC enclosure and many others. It's okay. Um, but I really like the lighting that I have in the shop. It shows well on camera. And since I want to record a lot of things in here, I decided to go with the same uh, strip light. It's LED. It's at Home Depot for $15. And what I wanted to point out was if I just place it using the mounting holes at the top, it's going to create some dark corners. So instead what I want to do is I want to mount it at an angle. So as you see this, now the enclosure is fully lit, including the corners and the bottoms. In order to do this, I'm going to need to cut a strip of wood at an angle, mount it to that piece of wood, and then mount the wood to the top of the cabinet. So to mount this light at an angle, what I did was take a scrap piece of wood and rip it down to a 15 degree angle. That way it's going to slope as I mount it. The, uh, the sloped side should go on the bottom and I should mount the light to the flat side on here. Uh, what I've done is I've already put the screws in. This type slides on. So once I get it on here, there we go. Um, See how it can slide back and forth like this? And yeah, you can tighten down the screws to where it's still snug when you do that. But what I just like to do is lock it into place, take a small piece of scrap and put it at the end. You could also, you know, just put a screw at the end if you feel like it, but the scrap works. We always need good uses for scrap, right? So this piece of wood, I intentionally made it longer than the light. That way, now all I have to do is just take it in, put a screw on each end, and the light's mounted. If you've watched my videos, you know that I glue everything. However, in this particular case, if you've also watched my videos, you know that I've ripped apart this corner a couple of times now already in the past few months. Um, so I'm not going to glue this face frame because I just have a sneaking suspicion that I'm going to redo this again at some point. Maybe I get some sort of thing that's much taller and I need to make a bigger enclosure. I don't know. Um, but so for this instance, I'm going to just screw, but I am going to be following up with adding silicone on every single one of the perimeter cracks. That way it's going to help with the air tightness. All right, now that the frame is up, I'm gonna go ahead and add the lights.
Let's add silicone around all the cracks on the inside, that way the bad stuff stays inside. Next we're going to install the air evacuation system and I currently have a six inch inline fan below this uh, area that's very hard to see. But uh, so I have that venting directly to the outside through an old air conditioning vent. I used to have my air conditioner over here. And so then that comes up to here and while it might not be pretty at all anymore, uh, I used to just have it sucking in from right there when it was just for this laser engraver. But now what I did was I put a Y and I still have my vent for my laser engraver so I can turn on and off ventilation here. And if you might recognize this if you watched my video on the AnchorMake M5C, this was a blast gate that I made. I love this thing. But if I close this blast gate and open that one, it will go through the tubing over to that area. So I'm gonna turn this on First, we're gonna do an airspeed test. So we're pulling about 964 feet per minute on there. And we'll also do a smoke test. Obviously, this works a lot better when my enclosure is closed, but we're just gonna see if this takes the smoke. There we go. And you see all that smoke's just going right down that vent. It's actually really effective. My shop does not smell like smoke when I'm doing heavy laser engraving, so I'm pretty happy with it. So if we're now going over to the 3D printer enclosure, I would close this and open this one. I'm going to make one more of these over here because I love this thing. It exits the unit, goes through a short piece of flex pipe. You only want to use as little flex pipe as possible. You always want to use smooth uh, pipe and then you can see I do another flex pipe to bring it up into the enclosure. So we're over at the new enclosures end. Let's go ahead and do a wind speed test. If you remember we were in the 900s before. We're at 885 so maybe we lost around 10 percent ish. Um, not too bad and that's loss is due to the pipe coming over here, particularly the flex pipe that we had to use. Anytime you use flex pipe that has ribbing in it, it creates wind resistance that's going to lower your suction power. Same thing with your dust collector. Now, something that I purchased is a carbon filter. And so this is used in some really expensive uh, carbon purification machine. But really all those machines are is a fan that sucks the air through this filter, if we want to be honest. So I already have a fan sucking through here. So what I'd actually like to do is take this and place it right here. Now my hole's just a teeny bit too big, so I am actually going to try to 3D print my own piece for this, which is going to require me to use some sort of 3D CAD. Um, hopefully this is as simple of a, a design as possible that I'll actually be able to accomplish this, uh, because as I said in my other video, I am really not good at that stuff, uh, but we'll see what we get. This is about as simple of a design as you can possibly get. I made a circle that is the right diameter of the filter and I raised it so that I would leave a lip at the bottom. I then made four small little circles for my screws to screw it down and that's it. Uh, that lip will hold the filter in place and it's good to go. All right, the piece is all printed. It looks very good. Um, I started to deconstruct this with pliers but uh, if you pull really hard on the top, the top does come off and this comes out. So we should be able to fit. And we don't. It's too small. Third prototype. Yay, it fits in. I know it's really simple and easy, but this is actually the first 3D thing that I've designed myself. So very pleased with myself. Let's install it. Next, I'm going to install a vent port on the side here, and this can open up to allow air in. If you have a system that's pulling all the air out, if it doesn't allow more air to come in, it's making a vacuum chamber, it's not really functioning well, it needs airflow. So um, I like this adjustable one that I had printed, but I'm actually not that happy with the quality of this print. 
Uh, I had made this with a printer previous to the uh, M5C, so I'm gonna print this over again and see if I can get better quality out of it. So I reprinted the vent and I couldn't be happier with it. I do have to say, you know, I'm a beginner's beginner with these 3D printers, and so I'm sure it's me, but it all comes back to the fact that Anchor Make software is so easy that I just click one button and it gives me a really, really nice, smooth print. Um, even when you like compare it over to this piece, this is the Anchor Make piece in precision mode and look at how smooth that is versus this one. Now, the software I was using doesn't have a precision mode per se. Uh, it just has fill in number values which, you know, I'm not sure what to do there. So I like that I can just hit the presets on this one and it produces a really nice finished product. My air port is installed and I can lift up this as much as I want to, keep it closed. It's very taut, so it's gonna stay in place. Now, on the inside, you'll notice it's still black and that's because I used an old black thin sock on the inside and so if I have any sawdust particles that are going to go in here uh, it's going to get trapped by that and every once in a while I can just hit this with the uh, shop vac and it will pull them out of there. Noise reduction is very important with an enclosure and by making it airtight you're preventing that noise from traveling through the air but you still can make vibrations in this thing. And so that's why I'm putting a piece of foam underneath my machines. Um, I'm using this piece of Husky knee pad foam that's from Home Depot, it's 14 bucks. It's incredibly dense, but also incredibly squishy, which doesn't seem like it should go together. It's also exactly the width of the 3D printer, which that works out great. Um, there's lots of people on YouTube that show using foam with a brick to stabilize the machine during fast printing and also for noise reduction. I'm really interested, I haven't seen anybody use this. I've been using it for a week and it works really well for me. So if you're in the know, go pick up one of these and try it and let me know in the comments. Um, I'm interested to hear from some more experienced 3D printer people than I, uh, if this will work for you. The reason why I built this cabinet the way it was is because I wanted to maintain my French cleats. They're amazing, I'm gonna add more French cleats to the outside in this wall over here. Uh, but it enabled me to print all these different types of organizational filament items. You know, I can print a whole rack. I can print one that has a bearing built into it. I can build these all in one, guys. And as I get different machines, as I change my needs and my uses in here, it's really easy just to move things wherever I want them. Uh, I'm not drilling holes, screwing into the wall, and so it's really easy for me to just have modularity, which is nice. And I can always just print new things and pop them in whenever I want to. It's very easy. French cleats are usually on a wall, but as I have them jetting out here, I'm now exposing myself to these very sharp corners. So what I'm gonna do is use a trim piece that I'm gonna put here, I'm gonna glue it, and I'm gonna attach it with some pin nails. I printed out some cable management clips that keep all of my cables organized. Humidity is the enemy of filament because it loves to suck that humidity into itself and then you have bad filament. So I'm going to put in this small dehumidifier, has a fun little light. And so in this confined space, it's going to reduce the humidity levels. That way I have very minimal drying time uh, inside a filament dryer before the filament is ready to print. Speaking of the dryer, I'm putting in a double filament dryer in between the two machines. In case I get a second 3D printer, I'll be able to directly feed it to both through the top access port. This is going to dry my filament 100% to where it needs to be before I start printing. Having this big hole that the electrical cable comes out of is not very airtight, and so I printed out this grommet, but this grommet has this line right here to allow the cable to come through, but that also allows air to pass in and out. So what I did was I cut a piece of Kaizen foam in a circle so that it would fit up in here. I cut a little slit in it as well to make sure that the wire would also go through the foam. And what it does is it fills this void. When I put this back down on the table, when I am putting some silicone on top, I don't have to put a crazy amount of silicone now to fill this hole. 
Uh, that way, if I ever want to change out what's coming through this thing, I'm not, you know, spending forever trying to rip apart all this silicone. Just installed a wall mount for a time-lapse camera. This will actually give me full live feed of my prints, so I can just look on my phone at any time, but it'll also make time-lapse videos that I can use here on my YouTube videos. I printed this really cool rail system, and each one of these items individually move on their rails, so uh, there's a whole bunch of different things that you can pick from this collection and hold all of your items that you need for your 3D printer. The printer does make a lot of little pieces of garbage. Of course, I made a little garbage can, the bin of broken hopes and dreams. Don't panic. You are not a failure, even if your print was. All right, I've attached the doors. They're very simple construction. I just ran a pocket through on each of the boards so I could slide the plexiglass in. Uh, it, you'll notice that this one is way bigger than the other one, and that's because I have this cart here. And I do put tools on top of this cart station, so sometimes it's going to be inconvenient for me to open this door because there's going to be stuff in the way. So I anticipate that this door is going to stay closed 90% of the time and only open when I actually need to really get into that corner. Uh, that way I made this one as big as possible. That way I can reach both of my machines. Now I also inserted a temperature and humidity gauge. I don't have a battery for it, so I have to go get one. But uh, this has a sensor on the inside, so it'll tell me what the humidity is in there, uh, which is pretty nice. Another thing that I wanted to point out was my weather stripping that I used in here. I used a premium weather stripping, a medium gauge and it's not enough. You want a really, really thick pad that compresses when you put the door in. So I want this door, when it goes, I wanna to have to push, and then I'm gonna make latches that go on the top that keep that pressure. That pressure is gonna make a better seal so that we keep it an airtight enclosure. So since this is not really doing it for me, I went and bought the expensive stuff. This uh, can compress 80%, and it's one inch thick, so it's, Really, really thick. It's 20 bucks a roll and I need two rolls of this, but it's gonna give me that airtight seal. The new thick seal is on and it's, it's really thick, it's really nice, so happy with that. Now, when the doors come together, there's always gonna be a crack and that crack, the entire way right here, is going to let air in and out. And so what I did was I repurposed some of the thinner uh, weather stripping that I had removed before and I put it on this board this board is going to go here and be screwed to this door. So when this other one closes, which means this one always has to close first, when this one closes, it's going to be uh, pushing onto this weather stripping and making a tight seal. All right, so we're all done, almost. Uh, we have our printer in, the enclosure's done, all our accessories are in here. Uh, I even made a clip-on filament guide. I removed the spool and everything because I want to be able to use that wall back there and that was kind of in the way. So we'll see how that works out. But what we don't have is awesome doorknobs for this. So I love Bender. He's my CNC machine over there. So we're going to make his cousin uh, Ruster or Bronzer since we're making it out of this uh, glitter rust color. I'm going to print these doorknobs in precision mode. I want them to look really good. And so what I'm going to do is take off the 4.0 nozzle and all I do is just unscrew it. I'm going to put on a 2.0 nozzle. So this is super high precision. And so it's going to be a longer print because it's squirting out less of the filament at a time, but it should make a much cleaner looking print. So I'm excited to see how it turns out. All right, so ambient noise in here is 36 to 38 decibels. I wanted to show you how important it is to make this completely airtight. Uh, right now, I have one of the locks that I haven't installed yet. So there's still just a little area where air is coming out, where noise is coming out. So let's take a look at what the max uh, number is right now. For about 47. Now, if I press in sealing this gap, we're at 42. There's a huge difference just by one little itty bitty gap right here. And if you notice, 42 with this closed with me right next to it, 
the ambient noise in here was in the 30s. So this is really, really quiet now. Okay, my 3D printer is safe, well ventilated, and dehumidified in here. And most importantly, I have air evacuation. So if I'm doing anything in this enclosure, whether it's 3D printing or lasers or something else, um, it's going to evacuate those toxic uh, VOCs and whatnot outside so that I'm not breathing it in. Um, if you're going to make a wooden enclosure and you're using machines inside of it that have heat, you need to use fire retardant spray. I made a video on this, link it down below. Um, I tested it myself by shoveling active, very hot fire into an enclosure I made that was treated with the fire retardant and it would not catch fire. It blackens all over the place, but it's not actively burning. So um, whenever you're using an enclosure that contains wood, make sure you use fire retardant spray on it and have a fire extinguisher. I have one right next to the enclosure too. Um, I have more than one in the shop. Fire safety is very important. Thank you very much to AnchorMake for supplying the M5C. Uh, I did a review of that in another video. I love this thing. I did not like 3D printers before, but this thing has really opened the entire world up of 3D printing to me. Um, and I'm really having a lot of fun with it. So thank you very much, AnchorMake, for the M5C. Also, there is a coupon code down below. So if you're interested in picking up one of those too, there's a discount code below. I hope you'll like and subscribe, and as always, stay safe in the shop. I'll see you in the next one. So it's been about two weeks since I built this enclosure. Super happy with it. Uh, I'm printing ABS right now, which is pretty difficult to print usually, but I haven't had any problems, and that's because the temperature in there is 101 degrees, and it is 24% humidity, which is great for my filament because it is definitely dry in there. I'm very happy with it. But what I wanted to point out to you was this, the gauge on the door. Uh, I regret putting a hole in my door to put this gauge here because as you can see, it says it's 88 degrees and 41% humidity. Well, that is not what that gauge is showing. And I had assumed that this gauge would tell me what it is inside because the sensor's on the inside of the gauge. Well, it's giving me like an amalgam of the outside and inside combined. Uh, it's about 42% humidity in the shop at the moment. And so that's why it's showing that. And the 88 degrees, it is about 72 in here. So it's kind of meeting in the middle because it's sitting on this hot box behind me. So if I were you, I'm just wanting to point it out. Don't put it on the door like I did. Highly regret that, but you know, it's there to stay because otherwise I'll have a hole in the door. Uh, go ahead and just put your sensor inside where you can easily see it and it'll do much better at telling you accurate numbers.